Hello, I'm Emma Barnett and welcome to Woman's Hour from BBC Radio 4. We're turning our attention today to a story we have been following closely. The way schools are inspected and the stress that that process can cause on some individual teachers and heads. Two school unions are calling for Ofsted inspections to be paused immediately following the outcome of the inquest into the death of the headteacher, Ruth Perry. The Association of School and College Leaders and the National Association of Head Teachers have issued a joint statement allowing asking to allow time for meaningful action to be taken. This request comes three days after a coroner found an Ofsted inspection last year had contributed to the suicide of Mrs Perry, the first time Ofsted has been listed as a contributing factor in the death of a head teacher. Her school in Reading was downgraded from outstanding to inadequate due to safeguarding concerns in November last year. Ofsted's Chief Inspector Amanda Spielman has apologised for the distress that the inspection caused and said this week's inspections would be delayed by a day and several other changes would be made to reduce the pressure felt by school leaders. And yet, in an interview on this programme a couple of weeks ago, the Chief Inspector said that there was no need to do away with the one-word verdicts on schools when they say outstanding or inadequate that can cause so much stress. And she talked of Ruth Perry's death being used as a pivot to try and discredit what Ofsted does. I wanted to give you the opportunity today to, to answer this. When you hear that two heads unions have come together to cause for a, a call for a pause in inspections from Ofsted, what do you think needs to change about the way we monitor our schools? How should we be doing it? Or are you fine with it as it is, as someone who perhaps uses these reports as a parent or someone connected to schools? What is your view on this? Do get in touch. This is a very difficult debate for some. It's something people feel incredibly passionate about, very close to. It may be something that's in your past and you still have a view you wish to share. The number is 84844. That's the number to text. On social media, we're at BBC Women's Hour. How should we be assessing and inspecting and grading our schools? You can email me through the Women's Hour website or send a WhatsApp message or voice note using the number 03700 100 444. Watch those data charges. You might want to use Wi-Fi. And get in touch now and I'll make sure, if I can, I'll read aloud your view, your take, your experience on this morning's programme. But two teachers' unions are calling for an immediate pause to Ofsted inspections following that coroner's ruling that an inspection contributed to head teacher Ruth Perry's suicide in January of this year. The Association of School and College Leaders and the National Association of Head Teachers issued a joint statement asking to allow time for meaningful action to be taken. Ahead of the Ruth Perry inquest, I spoke to the outgoing head of Ofsted, Amanda Spielman, who commented on the potential impact that the case had had on Ofsted's reputation. There was a, a very sad case in the spring which has been used as a pivot to try and discredit um, what we do. The quality of what we do and, and, the, and the, the quality of what we do underneath um, has been solid for years. We have a really strong feedback on our inspection framework. We know post-COVID there was a very clear message from the sector that they wanted that, that, that they wanted to keep that framework, that it's as good as inspection has, has ever been. People are really positive about it. Um, so somehow getting to a positive message about inspection in the sector is really, really important. Are you talking about the death of the, yeah. the primary head teacher, Ruth Perry, when you talk yes, about... Yes, I can't talk about specific. No, no, but if I can just yeah. r remind our listeners, if you don't mind, um, the primary head teacher, Ruth Perry, died in January mm. ahead of the release of a report that downgraded her school in Berkshire from outstanding to mm. inadequate from the top to the bottom of the scale. There were reports in the media at the time she took her own life. Ruth Perry's sister, Professor Julia Walters, has since said... The injustice of the one-word judgment destroyed Ruth's career, her world and her sense of self. The inquest starts next week. We, of course, don't want to prejudice that legal process by talking about the specifics. But you, you did raise this and you say you feel it's being used in some way to discredit your organisation. Um, by whom? It's very clear there's been a tremendous amount of media coverage and it's, it's very hard 
to get people to understand that, that firstly, we, we inspect and report in exactly the same way, as I've said, for all inspectorates. There is nothing about what we do that is out of line, that treats schools particularly harshly. We're part of that wider and really important framework of, of public accountability for public services. Parents do need to know what's happening in their school. They want the reassurance if it's going well. And if it's not going well, they want to know that that's recognised and the action is being taken. So it is a tough job, but somebody does have to do it. And that's us. That was that was listening. You were listening there to Amanda Spielman, the uh, outgoing head of Ofsted, in an interview uh, a couple of weeks ago here on this program. On Friday, we had Ruth Perry's sister, Professor Julia Waters, on the program, and she described how she reacted to hearing what Amanda Spielman had to say here on Woman's Hour. Hearing Amanda Spielman speak on Woman's Hour was the first time that I have actually screamed i have a counselor i have a grief counselor who said if you need to scream and i screamed and i screamed loud and long and it wasn't uh you know expletive <laughs> laden outburst at the in crass insensitivity of what she did it felt visceral it felt painful it was such a kick in the guts and just a few days before the inquest starts and here she is again in public media casting aspersions on me on those like me who can see there's something wrong with the inspection system suggesting that Ruth's death's being used as a pivot to discredit Ofsted I mean it's outrageous Professor Julia Waters there Ruth Perry's sister I'm joined now by Paul Whiteman, the General Secretary of the National Association of Head Teachers. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Tell us what you're you're calling for and, and what you, what changes you want to see. Well, we're calling for an immediate pause in inspection. There's a lot of pressure in the system right now and an awful lot of fear in the system that needs to be removed so we don't have another tragedy. Then what we need to do is to sit down with the inspectorate and government and begin to work on immediate things that we can do so that people can see that inspection will be proportionate and fair and have some empathy with the profession and then a much longer term review of what inspection looks like. So it's no longer an act of compliance, but actually truly can reflect the school's whole performance um, and celebrate its successes as well as some of its areas that need to improve. We were hearing from Amanda Spielman then, it was a much longer interview, people can hear it in full and catch up on, on BBC Sounds, but we were hearing there that parents need to know, they need to know what's going on in schools. And we did get some messages on the day uh, that she was on the programme saying that they that individuals, parents listening, had no issue uh, with single word verdicts, for instance, and they found them useful. So the profession absolutely welcomes a proportionate inspection system they think it's very valuable to understand where their school stands and to make sure that there is quality in the system so no one's arguing against inspection it's the way it's carried out right now it is commonly referred to as brutal uh, and we can see from the tragedy the impact that it has on school leaders when we survey our members it's the biggest stressor in their lives and the reason why many are leaving will not continue in the profession um, and it's the thing that drives workload the most and the health impacts it has are tremendous. Now, I know that doesn't deal with your point about single word judgment, but it's the single word judgment for the profession that doesn't describe the breadth of the school. So, for example, in Cavish's case, it was a really good school, but for one thing that was more administrative than anything else. And that that impact uh, led to the tragedy. So whether we retain one word judgment, we don't think we should. But that's part of the debate that we, that we need to have to arrive at a system that serves everybody well. But right now, this is damaging and dangerous. It's also worth noting, I mean, just because you mentioned about um, Ruth Perry's school, that that then did come back up in the grading. It has come back up since. But also, this is the first time um, that an inspection, a school inspection, has been listed uh, as as a as a link here in a, in a death. It is not something that is, thankfully, common. However, tragic and awful uh, this this particular individual case is. So, again, to, to ask you a question that is being asked: What about the idea that this is this is something that? isn't necessarily broken, but we, we now know a bit more about how it affects those. Why change the whole system? 
Well, we were campaigning for change as long as uh, 20, as far back as 2018, and our colleagues in ASCL have been campaigning alongside us as well. We've both produced reports that detail the damage done. Remember, if you're damaging school leaders and damaging teachers, they're not going to be as effective on behalf of children in school um, as they should be. So that's why it needs to change. And actually, the, the, the judgments don't tell us an awful lot about school. They don't really dig deep into the school. And they hold um, perverse incentives so that people comply with the Austin inspection rather than use their professionalism and agency to make sure their school is the best it can be. But I'd say this, in terms of going back to 2018, the pressure and the damage has been building and we've been bringing evidence of that throughout the whole period, both to the inspectorate uh, and to government. And that clip you played of the chief inspector is demonstrable of the arrogance that we've come up against throughout that whole period, a refusal to listen, a refusal to accept the evidence that we put forward on behalf of the profession. Now, ASCL and us uh, have a, a, about 59,500 members between us across 24,000 schools. Um, so you know, we, we are truly representative of the, of the profession. And to reject our claims because they're inconvenient or politically inconvenient uh, be, because of the damage being done uh, you know, it, it is truly, truly woeful. And the government now has to sit down with representatives of the profession and change the system. But it has to serve, and I agree, parents, it has to serve the profession and it has to serve the government too. How do you think you can do that? Because there have been some changes, Amanda Spillman talked about some of them uh, in light of this, and, and you obviously don't feel that they've gone far enough. How do you think you can do both? Reduce the stress on teachers and provide meaningful insights to parents? Yeah, so, I mean, the changes that have happened are far too little and too late. They haven't happened until after the tragedy became clear. And it took some weeks for that to take place after the tragedy became clear. There was an absolute rejection at the start that there was anything wrong with the inspection at all and, and any need to change. And we've seen that narrative right up until the coroner spoke uh, last week. Um, but what we need to do, I mean, we need to debate the one-word judgment. And even if we change that temporarily, um, until we can establish some confidence back in the system, that's going to be helpful. We need to talk about the, in the interventions that follow. So uh, school leaders, if, if their judgment goes into one of those categories that is less than good, uh, they worry about losing their job immediately, having no time to put things right whatsoever, having their school taken over um, by a, an academy uh, without time to put things right again. But when you listen to the evidence uh, that, that Ruth was talking about, they even worry about, these one-word judgments are so powerful, they even worry about diminishing house prices in the area because of that one-word judgment and assessment of their performance as a school leader. That's a level of, that's a burden of pressure and responsibility that nobody should carry, and we have to change that in the short term and then arrive at a system that serves us all in the longer term. Do, do you know what that system looks like, though? That's, that's what I'm trying to get to. What, what, from your perspective, does it mean? Yes, so... You know, uh, talking about things like balanced report cards. Now, these aren't necessarily easy. There's going to be difficulties in all inspection systems. But, but coming to a conclusion that says this school is safe, uh, this school is good in the following areas, this school needs improvement in other areas, will give parents an idea of where the school's strong, where it's working to improve, but also that their children are safe and happy in that school as well. And that's what parents tell us. When we talk to uh, representative bodies like parent kind. They tell us actually that their surveys tell them that the current um, the current inspections aren't used uh, as claimed, um, and actually um, and actually a different system needs to needs to take place. We're getting a lot of messages on this, uh, and I just just before I come to those. I've got a statement here from the Department for Education. Uh, we contacted the Department for Education, I should say, to invite a minister on the programme. We had no one, they had no one available to speak to us. But in this statement we've got here, let me read this. Ruth Perry's death was heartbreaking. The coroner's findings make clear that lessons need to be learned. Following the inquest, it's right that Ofsted is giving schools the choice to defer inspections until January as an extension of their existing deferrals policy. Uh, what do you make to that? And have you had anything more from the Department for Education since uh, the coroner came back? The Department for Education or Ofsted have not picked up the phone to either uh, Jeff Barton and Askell or I to talk about these changes or to give reassurance to our members. And that's really telling. When they talk about deferring until after Christmas, what a way to ruin Christmas, uh, to know actually that that short break that you get from the pressure uh, you're actually going to be going into school over that break because you know you've got an inspection coming first in the new year. It's that complete lack of understanding from the inspectorate about the impact that they have on schools and school leaders. And that's why they need to talk to us, representatives of those school leaders, to come to the right conclusions. So since the coroner's report, you've had no contact with the Department for Education? 
but not or, on this subject. Or with offset. Not on this subject. Not on this subject at all. And any, respo- we, we, any, res- met- any response yesterday, I believe, is when you first put this out for a call to immediate pause for inspections. Anything since then? Absolutely nothing. Um, the only thing we've had is a private conversation with the incoming uh, chief inspector and we're making arrangements to meet him formally in his first week. And we, we see that as, as, as a promising move, but that's all we've had so far. I've got some messages pointing out, which I, I did uh, a lot when we were talking to Amanda Spillman. This is the inspection system in England. There are different ones uh, across the United Kingdom that will have their specifics as well. So I do want to say that. Um, Hazel's written in just to say, and I wanted to put this to you because we've had lots of comments. I worry about the effects on children of their schools being judged inadequate. I worry about how children have been affected by the, in brackets here, avoidable death uh, of by suicide of their own head teacher, and then the trauma that this has caused them. This, that's a real safeguarding issue. I wanted to give you the, the chance to talk as the General Secretary of the National Association of Head Teachers about the impact, Paul, this, this has had, uh, Ruth Perry's death has had. Well, it's the impact leading up to inspection and the impact afterwards. So just, just to answer the point from uh, your, the, the, um, the listener there, um, schools are run now to comply with the needs of inspection rather than making decisions about what's good for the pupils in them. And that leaves the coolers and, uh, and things that aren't done that should be done. And then after inspection, if it does go into an adequate or, or, or a category that isn't what the school uh, desired or thought was, was worthwhile, then there's a whole period um, that the leadership team and teachers have to go through. Now, they work very, very hard to protect pupils from that. And I very much hope that pupils don't see that and feel the pressure of that. I think it's a very, very difficult thing to achieve. In terms of the the, the wider narrative about what's gone on, um, I I think we do have to be very careful. And I think we have been careful about the details uh, of of what uh, what happened to Ruth. But I think I want to pay tribute to the dignity and determination um, of Julia Waters and her family, because without having the determination to bring this forward, actually, I don't think we'd be any further forward in the debate. Excuse me. (coughs) And all of that danger and damage to children would be continuing now. Paul Whiteman, thank you very much. The General Secretary of the National Association of Head Teachers. Uh, another message here, we need to reform the whole school inspection system, change the whole short notice given with a visit from inspectors for a short time scale, involve teachers and parents in the redesign. We have great examples of continuing assessment in other disciplines. Uh, another listener pointing out that this model is only for England. We have a different approach in Wales and have replaced the single overall grade. Uh, another saying, I was so moved by hearing uh, Julia Waters on Woman's Hour, how sad it is that it takes the death of a dedicated head teacher to finally bring to the fore Ofsted uh, and often brutal inspections. Every teacher and everyone I know who knows a teacher is aware of the distress and worry inspections cause schools. Uh, and Sue says Ofsted needs reform. Primary schools, especially small ones, with mixed year classes where staff lead multiple subjects, should be inspected by leaders with knowledge of their context not secondary leaders. And so it continues. Please keep your messages coming in. Um, And just one more here that just pops in. I'm married to a working teacher who's worked more than 30 years. I don't know any of any teachers who object to constructive forward-looking inspections. In the past, local authority would be working with schools over time, getting to know the school and drive improvement. Uh, Strong opinions on this that I'd like to hear from from you about. Do keep getting in touch. Um, But I wanted to read this message because you're also getting in touch about what should be the changes, if any, to Ofsted's inspections of schools in England as school leaders from two unions get together and call for a pause in inspections. Um, We just heard from one of the uh, union leaders there. Libby has written in to say, my own mother's school was put into special measures in 2006 and despite working incredibly hard and achieving a good rating a few years later, this sent my mum into a deep depression She felt her character, ability and career had been called into question and I believe she never recovered from this. She took ill health retirement shortly after and her health continued to decline. She was taken from us far too young at just 60 in 2019. Libby, thank you for sending in that message. It's uh, it's an incredibly important one to, to read out this morning and thank you for trusting us with that. Keep those messages coming in. Some uh, ex-teachers now also getting in touch. I just have to say we're getting so many messages coming back to the discussion around Ofsted and inspection. Uh, I do want to read out some of these, if I can, or some more. I retired from teaching 12 years ago. Last Sunday, I had lunch with some old colleagues. The topic of Ofsted came up as it always does. I was shocked to hear that four of us still have distressing dreams a decade later. It is the main reason 31% of teachers leave 
within five years, says Sally, um, citing some some research there, of course, that um, I don't have to hand, but you've obviously seen. Uh, another one here, I still remember the evening 30 plus years ago when my wife called me in distress after being unjustifiably criticised by a British Ofsted inspector who was clearly on some kind of power trip. And yet another one here, no name on it. I'm married to a hardworking and dedicated Ofsted inspector. As a former teacher and head teacher, he is well aware of the challenges and stresses of this role. School leaders, like other vital professions, should still be accountable, accountable for delivering a good education and ultimately the safeguarding for the children. Uh, and another one here, I'm an ex-teacher, this is from Alison, and a governor with over 20 years' experience at three different schools and so have a lot of experience on Ofsted. What should be a positive experience aimed at improving a school and thereby the experience of young people involved is far too is often far too stressful and negative. Of course, schools need inspecting, but in my experience, inspectors too often come with preconceived ideas about the school and a determination to grill staff. That's not an exaggeration. And one more here from Robert, which says, I don't agree with the head teacher's spokesperson, the head of the uh, union we just had on. Ofsted reports, uh, Ofte, Ofsted reports excuse me, are several pages long. I know because I read them and they contain information on good bits and bits that need attention. A single word summary helps parents and carers like me. I have no connection with Ofsted, but welcome its view in preference to the wall being pulled over my eyes, sometimes by school leaders and governors. Get a grip, teachers, and use inspections as free consultancy to help you improve. As I say, from Robert, one of our listeners, and, and many more messages that I'm not sure I can quite get to, but I've tried to read out a good cross-section there of what we are receiving. It's a highly emotive topic, especially in this particular context. 